All right, good morning. So in today's Sunday School lesson, we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 17. We're going to be talking about Jesus and the healing of the 10 lepers. And so some of the things that we're going to hit on um, are the importance of faith, the importance of uh, being thankful. Uh, but most of all, what we're going to try to focus on is Jesus's power and Jesus's compassion toward us and his ability to save us. All right, so a couple of pieces of background that are going to be helpful to us as we get into this story in Luke 17 is, first of all, uh, about leprosy. So leprosy was a serious disease in Jesus' time, um, all the way back, way into the Old Testament, way before Jesus' time. Leprosy was a, a skin disease that was something that was considered unclean. It was very dangerous. It was very contagious. And so because of all of those reasons, um, it was actually something that would keep people from coming or they were not allowed to come and be part of the people of God as the, as the Israelites would gather for worship in the temple or gather together. If you had leprosy, you were not allowed to be part of that. Um, for one, because you, you were highly contagious and two, uh, because it was, it was a, it was just a symbol of uncleanness. So it was a really serious disease. It would cause lesions in the skin. It was caused by a bacterial infection. There was not really much treatment for it back then like there may be now. Uh, it would damage the nerves in, you know, in your skin, you know, like in your face, your ears, uh, your hands, your feet. It would, it would damage the nerves to the point that you couldn't feel anything. And then because of that nerve damage and the lesions, it would then lead to, you know, people would have lots of, of accidents, um, they'd get lots of infections, and then those infections that would come from those, those wounds and things that would come because you couldn't feel could, could lead to the loss of fingers or toes uh, or bad infections, your ears, your nose would even fall off. And, and so it was really a, a horrific thing. And this, you know, you you'd actually, some lepers would end up at the extreme case where it was just, rotting flesh and this awful smell that would come there so they would not even be allowed to be around their own families and so lepers were as much of an outcast as you could possibly have um, if they were walking down the street or they were walking and and someone else came by then they would have to shout out unclean unclean so that you would know not to come with them so they were separated from society so oftentimes lepers would start to group together uh, and sometimes things that would ordinarily have kept people from being together like let's say Jews and Samaritans who we talked about in last week's lesson didn't want anything to do with each other but if you were a Jewish leper and a Samaritan leper and you lived close together you may actually gather into a group of lepers together because no one else would have anything to do with you so leprosy was one of the most feared and, and dreaded diseases that you could have back in that time because it not only was it putrid and it stunk and you could get infections that would cause you to lose fingers and toes but but it separated you from your family you were not you couldn't be around your wife you couldn't be around your children you couldn't come to the temple or the synagogue to to be around you just were considered nothing and so we're gonna we're gonna look at how Jesus has, is gonna show compassion on a group of lepers in our story today okay so another piece of background information that's going to be useful to us as we look at this is understanding what part of the book of Luke we're in so the book of Luke we're gonna be looking at a portion of chapter 17 where Jesus comes and 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 offers healing to these 10 lepers. Se chapter 17 is part of a long journey in the book of Luke that began all the way back in chapter nine and last all the way until chapter 19, which is Luke sort of uh, uh, delivers as Jesus's journey to Jerusalem, right? Luke writes his story. We're starting at, 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 at chapter nine, Luke, or Jesus, starts to be very open with his disciples about the fact that he has to go to Jerusalem and that he is going to suffer and that he is going to die a, a terrible death. And so as he is traveling from Galilee to Jerusalem in this portion of Luke, uh, he, he's sort of zigzagging back and forth across the countryside, 
on his way to Jerusalem as he's teaching the people. And so this story about Jesus healing the lepers comes uh, at the end of a very long section of teaching as Jesus has taught about all, all sorts of different things. He's taught about the rich young ruler and greed and faith and uh, taking care of the poor. Uh, there's been a, an awful lot of talk here. And now in chapter 17, he's just a couple of chapters away from getting to Jerusalem where he is going to lay down his life for the world. And so we get this short passage about Jesus' compassion on these lepers, some of whom are Samaritan. Uh, and, and we're going to see, we're going to talk some at the end of the lesson about how, how Luke uses this story to teach us about what Jesus is, is trying to accomplish or, or does accomplish and what that means for us as people who need uh, to be healed. So let's look at the, uh, the Bible passage here in Luke 17. We'll start at verse 11. We'll read down to verse 19. And it says, while traveling to Jerusalem, he, Jesus, passed between Samaria and Galilee. So he's, he's up in the northern region. He's heading down to Jerusalem. Uh, and as he does so, he's sort of zigzagging back and forth across the, across the countryside, teaching as he's going. So he is passing now between the border between Samaria and Galilee. And as he had entered a village, 10 men with leprosy met him. And they stood at a distance because that's what they were required to do, right? They weren't allowed to come near anyone. And they raised their voices saying, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he told them, go and show yourselves to the priest. Of course, the reason for that is uh, when someone had leprosy, uh, they were excluded from from uh, communal worship. They weren't allowed to come together uh, with the rest of the people of God. And the priest also served as sort of a sort of like the Department of Health. If someone had some type of skin disease that would separate them from the people of God, then uh, when they were healed of that or or the symptoms had gone away, they had to come uh, to the priest, and the priest would declare them to be clean. Now. Jesus has sent them to the priest while they still have physical signs of leprosy. And so uh, they obey him, right? It says, and while they were going, as they were obeying him, in other words, they were cleansed. But one of them, seeing that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice gave glory to God. And he fell face down at his feet, Jesus' feet, thanking him. And Luke makes a point of letting us know that the one who comes back was a Samaritan, right? Remember, we're here between the regions of, of Samaria and Galilee. So we have this guy who is, is doubly ostracized. A, he's a Samaritan. B, he's a leper. And he comes back and he falls face down at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus's response is, we're not 10 cleansed. Where are the nine? Didn't any return to give glory to God except this foreigner? except for this one who's, who's not of us, this one who's different from us? Is he the only one that came back to give glory to God? And Jesus told him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has saved you. So, you know, some of the things we see from the story we just read through, uh, one is Jesus's compassion. As the lepers, they don't even come close to him. They just they just call out, Lord or Jesus, Master, have have mercy on us. Jesus has compassion on them. He doesn't send them away without without doing something for them. He uh, he tells them to go to the priest. Again, the reason he tells them to go to the priest, like we mentioned when we were reading the story, was the only reason they would go to the priest at all. The only reason they'd even be allowed to go to the priest is if they thought they were better, because part of the priest's job. Was to, was to examine the, the wounds, the sores, and to see that they had gotten better. And there were different tests prescribed in the book of Leviticus to do that. So Jesus tells them to go to the priest, and he would only tell them to do that. And they certainly understood what he meant when he, when he told them that, as if he was telling them that they were going to get better. And so you have Jesus' compassion on them. And you see that in other places. We looked a few weeks ago in our, in our Sunday school lesson at a place in the book of Mark where a leper comes to Jesus and asks him to heal him. 
And Jesus does the unthinkable and reaches out and puts his hand on him and touches him. And so Jesus, the one who, who by all expectations should contract leprosy and then become unclean by touching the leper in the story in Mark, instead heals the leper and makes the unclean become clean. And so Jesus really had compassion on people who were, who were in this issue. Well, the second thing that we see is the, the faith that was required on the part of the lepers is when they turned around and left Jesus after asking him for mercy and he told them to go to the priest, they weren't better yet. They still had leprosy. And so there's an act of faith on their part to take this journey to find a priest to be declared clean and they believe him. They, they believe that he is capable of doing something even without touching them, even from a distance. It kind of reminds you of the story of the centurion who, who had the servant who was sick or the son who was sick, and, and I can't remember the story exactly. Uh, but Jesus says the word and, and heals the centurion's son from a long way away. Um, and so that, you know, it's sort of similar to that. And so as the, as the lepers go in faith, you see Jesus' power as they're healed on the way. And it's almost like they're surprised as suddenly these, these wounds dry up or they start to feel again in, in what fingers and toes they may have had left. And, and so they're just, they're struck by his power uh, and Jesus' power is made known by this miracle of their, of their healing. But the third thing you see really is, is the need, or the fourth thing really is the need for uh, thankfulness. And so of the 10 lepers who Jesus healed, only one of them comes back to thank him. And so the other ones are, are so excited about the gift that they've gotten that they're, that they, you know, they're still running off to, to the priest so they can be declared clean. That, but one leper realizes that the person he really needs to come back and give thanks to is God in the person of Jesus. And so he comes back and with a loud voice, right? He's he spent the last who knows how many years of his life screaming and yelling because he always has to be at a distance to people. And so when he comes back to give thanks, he does it with a loud voice. He is he can't help himself. He is thankful that, that God has healed him and he comes back to Jesus. And Luke makes a special point to note that this guy is a Samaritan, like we talked about in last week's lesson, who was ostracized. He is he is, he is doubly separated from God's people by A, being a leper and B, being a, a Samaritan. And Jesus looks at him and says, your faith has made you well or your faith has saved you. And that's the same word for saved there that's used in other places in the Bible that talks about it, uh, us being saved from our, our sins. And so those are four things there. Jesus' compassion, the response of faith, Jesus' power, in, in the response of, of thankfulness. And it's so often that, that we forget to be thankful. We cry out to God for our, in our needs and we ask him for help where we need help. And then when he delivers, then when he comes and answers our prayers, sometimes exactly like we want and sometimes not, we, we just go on about our business thinking about ourselves and we forget to come back and give glory to God and to thank him for what he's done. So at a minimum from this lesson. If, if all we did was stop right there and not look at the rest of how this fits into the book of Luke, at a minimum, we should see that God is able to help us, that he cares about us, that he sees our prayers, hears our prayers, and that we should, in faith, humbly come back and thank him. And because of all that God does us, we should do that on a regular basis. Let's not let God be amazed or Jesus be amazed that we've come back and thank him like he is with this guy. He's amazed that there's no one come back but this one foreigner. Is let our thankfulness be so regular that it just becomes part of who we are. So the last thing we want to talk about is how Luke uses this story. So we said at the beginning that this was uh, in toward the end of Jesus' journey to Jerusalem that started in chapter 9 and he's been teaching all kinds of things as he's traveled on his way to Jerusalem and that's the way Luke has laid this story out is, is this is a journey to Jerusalem where Jesus is going to give his life for his people. He's going to die on behalf of us to free us from our sins and to, and to restore us to God. And so here close to the end of that is when this story of the lepers are. 
And so it's almost as if Jesus is, or Luke is taking this story of the lepers and using it to teach us something about Jesus and what he's going to accomplish for us in Jerusalem. So leprosy, it wasn't a sin to be a leper. But leprosy was a, was a type of uncleanness that sort of became something that represented a person's separation from God and a person's separation from God's people because it, it physically did separate them, right? They had to stay away from their families. They had to stay away from everyone else. They had to call out unclean, unclean, and, and they couldn't go to worship with everyone else. And so it, leprosy became a physical symbol of a spiritual reality that was in our lives. And so when Jesus comes here toward the end, just a couple of chapters before he gets to Jerusalem, uh, and he heals these lepers, and then talks about the thankfulness of the one and tells him that your faith has saved you, especially since that one leper happens to be a Samaritan, it's, it's Luke's way of using this story, this true story, to say here's what Jesus came to do. He came as he dies, he is going to die for those who are separated from God, who are separated from God's people, who are, who are marginalized, who are uh, uh, isolated, who, who, who can do nothing to make things better for themselves and need someone to, to, to die in their place, to bring them physical healing, uh, but most of all, uh, spiritual restoration. And so just as Jesus restored and healed the lepers, Jesus can restore us in our spiritual brokenness to God and then make us the kind of people who have the compassion that he has so that then we can turn around and go back out in the world, tell that story of Jesus' sacrifice on our behalf and reach out and help them physically and spiritually, those who, who are isolated from everyone else. And so that's what I want us to leave this with is, is one, being thankful for what God has done for us, for what he's done physically for us in our lives, but what he has also done spiritually for us in our lives to, to give us a relationship with God. And then how that turns us around as a church, as a body of believers who now turns around and together serves those who are considered to be the less thans to bring them the love of Jesus. Thank you. I hope you all have a good week. So the last thing we want to talk about is, is how this fits into stop it right there all right test number two we're trying this see if this is loud and how loud do i have to talk that y'all can hear me really well out here where we talk about the lord and the lepers the lord and the lepers yes sir the lord hit the lepers and the leprosy hit the le left the lepers so this is test number three to see how it works with these headsets in my ears and how dumb it looks we're trying me and Samuel's gonna be pros. Go ahead, turn around. Okay, the Lord loved the lepers and the lepers left. <laughs> okay, you can pause it. And the lepers was laughing and leaping because the Lord loved the lepers. <laughs> <laughs>